Yeah. All right, Moshe Pro, no big surprise, right? What sucks about this is it's been a violator of time, this little magnet. It looks like somebody might have glued it back on. The idea of this little magnet is I could jam it between two gears, hence the term gear jammer. And now I don't need any impact tools or anything. I could simply use hand tools because it wedges those two gears together. Now to tighten it, to torque it to spec, I could do the same thing. I put it on the other side. I go under here <laughs> like that. And you see how now it holds them and I can go ahead and tighten them. Right. Okay. It's like a $10 tool. Pretty cool? Yeah. Okay. I like how so, it has that little nifty rope on there. So that is, uh, yeah, that is the way um, to do it per most factory instructions. It, factory instructions. How do you think um, I take this nut off? Impact. Impact. Impact tools. The, what's the only reason I get to use an impact? Because you have this on here. Because you're removing it. Because you're... And the piston. Your piston always rod is already supported. Yes, my I would have a piston in here. Okay, not on one with a rod just banging around. I'd ruin the cylinder. But if my engine's fully assembled and I'm just doing maintenance, it's not like locked up or broke or something else. Heck yeah, I'm gonna get on here and I'm gonna get that impact on there, and that piston's gonna move up and down a little bit. But eventually, the impact will overcome the nut and make, uh, take the nut off. Okay. Here's another way to do it. I'm going to ruin this. Okay. okay. Is uh, we use a softer metal, okay, than the gears, and you just stick it between the two. And then take your nut off. Now, this, this just wasn't on there very tight. So, you guys that have one torqued, you guys that have one torqued, you'll end up folding that thing about in half and about breaking it. So I don't like it for assembly because it'll shave a little bit off. I mean, realistically, if you're going to do stuff, this this is just to be fun, okay? Just to show you guys a way to do it. Okay, so your, your comments a little bit ago were, well, how can I test the right crank seal? So now you guys can see that down in here. And I can see this seal is uh, even hanging out. No, it's got some carpet or something on it. I don't know. But um, this is where we would pressure test it, soapy water, and we would look for the leak. Um, this seal is what was allowing the smoke into Robert and Jenny's motor. Nowhere else. It was leaking past that right crank seal, filling this up, and then it was going out their oil hole. Okay? Um, Let's keep moving forward here. I'm going to go ahead. It's nice that Suzuki had all these 8 millimeters uh, fasteners. I got five bolts here. How do I say I'm going to take it apart? Start and kiss. I'm going to unkiss. Then you're going to loosen evenly. Yep, and I'm going to go here, here. What I'm using as a guide is this surface, and I'm just bringing the washer up to that surface. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. I messed up my star pattern already. Start over here. I'm going to go from here. Now I'm going to go above it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Go here. Okay, I've got all the main tension off it, so now I can just go all the way. It's under almost no pressure whatsoever now. I'm going to keep, for me, I'm going to keep all this in the same clutch cover baggies. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is a common bolt when installed. People over torque and uh, break off in the clutch basket. So what's our clutch do? We haven't talked about them yet. What, what's the definition of a clutch? It does two things. It either transmits the power and allows the connection or it removes the power, disengages the connection. So we got to think about it. It works both ways, right? I want to know how exactly it works. Is that interesting? You're going to in this transmissions class that we're doing. Everything that's in here, now we get to uh, do it all. Now we get to have fun with it? All right. And there's a lot of ways for this to screw up or have problems or, or whatnot. I want to look at a couple of things here. So did you guys notice the teeth on this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we call this a rack and pinion gear. So inside our cover here, you can see these teeth in here. So you got a rack and a pinion here. This sits inside of this. And so we open and close. We engage and disengage the clutch. Do you see how we're moving that back and forth? Mm -hmm. And what that does is pushes against those springs <coughs> on this one. 
what it does is it actually pulls against the springs and then separates the distance between the clutch pack of the steels and fibers. And then it sits and spins and we don't transmit power to the transmission. So we have a crankshaft gear, we have this outer clutch basket, and we have this inner clutch basket. We're going to go into all the detail of how all this works together. But just real quickly, you're learning a new terminology here of a rack and a pinion. How often does a do clutches actually go out of bikes? It depends so much on how they operate. It. So it's a huge variance. You might have one person. Uh, um, you might have one person that. Uh, um, has a clutch last 50,000 miles and the next person it lasts 3,000. You know, sport bike guys in particular are pretty hard about that. All right, to continue on with this, I want to show you two different ways to do this. So for me, bar, 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 impact off, never on. And we'll get to that when we get close. I'm going to show you a whole box upstairs of these nuts stripped. I think I talked about it earlier. Okay, so um, Suzuki, Han, and everybody else gives us multiple ways to do this, okay? So they tell us, per their instructions, to go ahead and take the pack out, okay? So this is a whole bunch of steels and, and fibers in here. I pulled it out nice and easy. What I want to do is I want to pull this out and I want to set it on the bench with the top side like this. And we're going to get into why when we do the clutches. But the reality is, is this could be all mixed up, twist around. I got to be able to know how to put it back together. But for it, diagnostic and inspection purposes, you want to pull your pack out and then just set it aside so that you can keep taking stuff apart to look at it later. Good enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's your uh, first tip. There's a clutch pack. The reason I leave the clutch pack in is right now, check this out, okay? This is free. This is the inner basket which is splined onto the transmission shaft, okay? Well, the outer basket is driven off the, crank, off the crank. When I take that whole pack out and now I have an impact on here, I don't have any drag. You see what I'm saying? And so the, it just wants to go, and it's just going to whirl up really fast. So you leave the clutch pack in, use your impact, and it'll, and it'll come apart. But... We have specialty tools to be able to do this as well. So I use this for something else. I think you guys saw me use it on a sprocket, maybe. Rear, uh, front sprocket. Yeah. Okay. This is intended for this. I don't really super care for it. What's this? What's this uh, basket made out of? Anybody know? Aluminum. aluminum. It's made of aluminum, aluminum, right? Aluminum. What's this made out of? Steel. Steel. Okay. It's got this little tapered edge on here. Okay. And what? This is how you are supposed to use this. You guys are probably going to cringe here. Oh, I take and I set this on here like that. I pick two right. grooves. Okay, and I'm going to turn this down, and I want the minimal amount of pressure to just hold it. And now what I need to do is get someone else to come across here, and I will hold this, because what I don't want to have happen is I don't want this tool to come down and like catch and break a, we call these fingers on the clutch basket, the outer clutch basket. I don't want to break a finger off, so the whole situation is a little Dangerous per se, regardless. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, would you guys know how to make the coolest tool? And they do sell them now. Somebody got smart and decided to make their million dollars. Okay, so you're going to be a mechanic and you're probably going to put a few clutches in in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So this is the steel part of the clutch. So what you do is you save these. You don't throw them away. Then what you do is you take and you take all the different steels for all the different size clutches so that you can fit multiple miles, and you weld a steel handle out here. Hmm. That's way better. Yeah. It doesn't dig into those grooves, and it doesn't cause any, any problems. Now, out of Parts Unlimited, there's companies in there that are selling you know, a whole bunch of different um, sizes of these for popular bikes. But you got it right in front of you. Almost every shop's got a welder. You man, just weld a steel rod out there, and there's your holder. Pretty cool. Now, I would recommend that when you do that, that you angle it so that it's up and out and not trying to go through one of these fingers because I don't want to bang. I don't want to be in here to where I would, I would if I welded a, a rod onto this like this, as I tighten it, I could bang that finger. So what I'd want to do is something like this. Make sense? Yeah. All right. There's a cool little trick for you. Some Guys, trick. get down Power Sports. My old shop, Clay, he's got probably a dozen of those made up hanging on a rack in the back and we always kept saying you know god we have to sell these this is a good idea and now somebody makes them so good for them right all right so our clutch hub clutch hub nut 
Can you guys get a little bit familiar with these parts? What did I say this one's called? Outer basket. Outer basket. Baskets. Think of it, it holds everything. If you were going to put a bunch of apples in something, you're going to put them all in a basket, right? Yeah. So this holds all the clutch components. It's the basket. The inner one is the hub. The inner hub. There, there's so many different uh, you know, kinds and types and stuff out here. This part here, I didn't give it a name. Anybody know what it's called? Out. Pressure plate. So this is the very last of the pack. This is the very last of the pack, okay? So I want you to think about something. It, it's a metal one. So what's always going to be up against this? Another metal. Yeah. Yeah. A fiber. We're going to be a fiber steel, fiber steel, fiber steel, okay? Because this is the last one. What I want to just point out right now is the this, this outer pressure plate actually has those fingers just like a steel does. So let's take a look at the difference of these. We'll just start off with the fiber. The fiber has these tabs on the outside because it slides up and down these grooves, right? Mm -hmm. So it has the tabs on the outside. The steel has the inner teeth to engage into the hub. So the steels are attached to the transmission and the fibers are attached to the crankshaft. So when these are really tight, there's a lot of friction and we have a connection to drive the rear wheel. When we pull our clutch lever and disengage, we separate these, creating a gap, and now the two are turning independently and we have no power to the rear wheel. Very, very simple in design. The, what I, all I want to do right now is the introduction to how these engage, but a lot of people, when they go to a clutch for the first time, don't realize that the outer pressure plate has those fingers too. Do you see those? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you look at the inner hub, it has fingers in here where they need to engage into. Sometimes these are actually going on the outside. In this one here, you can see that if I put it on correctly, it'll go all the way down. But if I rotate it, it'll, it'll catch. I can actually get it to where it won't go in. And then I put my bolts in, I got a false torque, and I wouldn't have a tightened clutch pack. Make sense? When this is tightened down, should you be able to move those fibers and steels around? <coughs> no, not at all. Now, Suzuki on some of their street bikes reversed it, and the outer basket has, it's like they folded the steel, they folded the steel inside out, and they put these fingers on the outside, and then their, um, so their friction plates have these fingers on the outside, and then their fibers have something more like this on the inside. You guys are going to see that, whoever does our GSXR 1100 motor. One way or another, so many different ways of doing this. Okay, so last person worked on this. Here was the nut, okay? Do you see how they didn't bend that safety tab over? Yep. Okay, you could see where it was violated at one time, but the last time person they, that did this didn't torque this and bend it over. So that's something. How many times do you use this? Once. It's a one-time use. Okay, good stuff. Okay, at this point here, I could start to pull this stuff off. Every single one of these in the world is going to have some type of washer spacer in between the inner hub and the clutch basket. You guys, we're going to focus a lot of attention around this when you guys do yours. Because if you don't put this washer in here, metal this metal. is metal to metal, and you won't be able to ever separate the two. When you torque that nut down, it locks the clutch up. Now you put the cover on, you put oil in it, you go start the motorcycle, you pull the clutch. It's going to feel like you disengaged it, but you put it in gear, and that bike's going to launch on you. Because nothing's actually separating it. It's okay? Gear. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, you can feel that drag and friction, but when you have the washer on there, check this out. So every clutch I ever do, I do this. See how I tell that it's spinning? Mm -hmm. Okay. Without that washer, I don't. I don't have that. So something you guys will take a look at um, on yours. Basket itself just simply comes off now. Do you see these like uh, notches on here? Yeah. I think I got lucky when I pulled it. Um, no, this one doesn't matter. Sometimes what you have to do is you have to actually turn the basket until you have clearance. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to just take the bolt out, do you see how it blocks right here? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to get the bolt out. I'd hit. See that? But if I just rotate it just like that, there's enough room that I can just get that bolt out. You're going to run into these, these clearance issues on some other stuff. So I'm going to take my basket, 
So Set it aside. When you rebuild a clutch, do you need to pull all the stuff out or just the no. discs? So is that normal wear then? No, that's excessive wear. Yeah, when we get in our clutches, we're going to talk about when we have to take baskets out. A lot of times we just take the pack out and determine visually whether we need to go any further. Uh, the pack and the springs are the common replacement items. And uh, I got a bunch of good clutches and bad clutches to show you guys. Um, without taking the snap ring off, I'm not allowed to go any further here. Here's my gear for my crankshaft. And now I'm down to my crank seal. So here's a question. Can you change the seals from the outside? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Yes. On every motor in here but the Kawasaki. The Kawasaki has a lip that the seal has to be changed from the inside of the motor. You actually press it into the case half from the inside of the Kawasaki. You guys are really loving those right now, aren't you? Well, Hard to get the motor out. The one thing I like about it is if the crank seal went bad, the motor probably got hurt a little bit, and so it forces somebody to go through and, and take a look at everything. So I, I kind of like that part of it. Okay. Um, this is our governor assembly here. You're going to see some multiple little pieces here. This is what I talked about with centrifugal force. That moves that up and down. So that'll swing out um, due to the, the RPM, and that's going to uh, um, engage our power valve.